Okay, guys, so um, just a quick um, introduction to the lecture. Um, basically, I've been invited to speak to you guys by Chris uh, in terms of my experiences and the sort of the life of a performance analyst. Uh, so I'm just going to run briefly through uh, my experiences and, and what I've sort of learned and what advice I can give uh, you guys. So obviously question mark in terms of why I'm here, uh, why I'm speaking to you guys. And it's, yeah, like I said before, it's basically to give you a bit of an experience, a bit of an understanding of what uh, what I've lived in the world of analysis and try and sort of help you guys as, as much as I can. So just in terms of the experience, again, I'm not a person that likes speaking about myself, but I thought it'd be good to share where my sort of journey started and where it's gone. Um, so I started off studying at Liverpool John Moores University. I was doing a course uh, in science and football, uh, which was really, really good. Um, then I did a master's in sports psychology, got an internship at Everton, uh, doing performance analysis and sports science uh, with the first team in academy. I then went on to coach at Wigan Athletic academy uh with the under under 10s at the time uh also did some work with the gibraltar national team coaching the 17s and the 19s uh, then i got a full-time internship at brighton uh, and then from there got a full-time role at the club within the first team performance analysis department uh, went on to move on to norwich uh, as the opposition analyst for two seasons and then went to Huddersfield as the opposition analyst and eventually got promoted to the head of uh, analysis. So I was there for nearly four years. Um, so yeah, that's just a bit of experience um, in terms of my background. It's really important that you understand uh, before you go into anything that you know you, you try and find what your passion exactly is. Uh, what is it you enjoy doing? What is it you really want to do um, in terms of a career, in terms of a, a job? Um, because once you do find that out, or you have a good idea of that is, then it's, uh, you know, your world, your oyster, there's no limits in terms of where you can go. Uh, but first of all, the most important thing for me is to find out what you really love, what you enjoy, what are you passionate about, and then and then take it from there. So whether it be analysis, whether it be coaching, whether it be fitness coaching, whether it be physiotherapy, try and find what it is um, and then go for it and then just, just give, give everything you can to that. So in terms of the performance analysis, um, what the main duties, roles and realities are off the role. So before we start, just a quick overview in terms of how we broke down performance analysis in football, how we looked at the game tactically, because there was a lot of involvement in terms of tactics and game plan. Um, so we divided it into obviously the four parts of five parts, sorry, for offensive organisation, defensive transitions defensive organization to offensive transitions and then restarts which is obviously uh when the ball's out of place so throwing goal kicks um corner free kicks um uh, highlighting throw-ins there which is a really important aspect in the game that doesn't get looked at enough in my opinion uh and um yeah those are so how we sort of analyze the, the game so in terms of the actual role, uh, main duties um, and realities of it, the reality is it's it's long hours, it's normally underpaid, so just to put that on your radar, listen, you will get some roles that are well paid, but you've got to sort of work for that and work your way up. And at the beginning, you probably have to do a lot of internships, volunteer work, that's just part and parcel of, of the career. Um, but that is a reality, uh, unless you're very lucky. Um, support service uh, you're there to support the coaching staff the players it's a service you're giving to the to them and to the club um, there's a lot of roles now within analysis so it's so uh, you get things like now like individual analyst you get opposition analyst you get post-match analyst you get set plays analyst you get um, um Goalkeeper analyst, you get so many different types of roles now. You also get recruitment analysts who are involved in the scouting side. Uh, so there's so many more roles. It's more broader now. You will do a lot of video clipping uh, with programs such as Sports Code. Um, you know, them type of programs uh, where you clip a lot of video um, when you're watching games using your cold window. Um, you're providing information, be objective and subjective. So some of it can be objective in terms of the data, uh, which is growing a lot now in the in the area of performance analysis. And obviously a lot of it can be subjective, can be your opinion when you're watching a game, you might have a particular opinion on, a, on an instance in a game that can be very subjective. 
and it can be rewarding when you're successful if you do do well there there are benefits and there are strong rewards to the job so what are the different types of performance analysis of so you've got qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis like i said before qualitative analysis could be video um yeah, it's more subjective, it's more opinion-based, uh, whereas quantitative is sort of objective information, such as statistics. Um, so those are the differences which, which, which you both use, uh, which you, sorry, both are used within, within performance analysis. So different four part, the four different parts that we'd probably say we use, um, it's opposition analysis, both team and individual. The identity of the particular team, so individually and collectively, uh, how do they want to play? Uh, what is the style? What are the training methods? What is the sort of methodology of the club? Knowledge clips, which are best practice. So watching teams like uh, Real Madrid, Barca, Liverpool, Man City, these type of teams where you're getting uh, the best best clips, benchmark clips to, to work off um, as ideas and as examples. And then you have a thing as well with the league, league databases. So... We had a database for all the set plays, all the chances on the goals within the championship um, as a database, uh, which was really good information, uh, both um, for qualitative and for quantitative analysis. So the cold window is really important. Um, it's going to be a very important part of your of your working process when you do get into a performance analysis. Obviously, this one looks a bit complicated, but um, you know, essentially, you've got the codes, you've got the labels that describe the codes, and then you've got the the the, the notes which act as an extra layer of information. So you can create your own code window. You know, you can make it very very jazzy. Um, you know, um, can add sort of different colors once you get to know how to use the software. This is a sports code example, uh, but there's so many things you can code and you can get stats and information for. Uh, you can be quite creative with it, which is really good. So that's just an example of one that we used. Uh, like I said, essentially it's the code, which is the event. Maybe it'd be a goal kick, for example. Uh, and then the label describes the event. And then the group label uh, would be the, um, the sort of grouping of that particular label. Um, and then you've got the notes, which become an extra layer. So this could be a practical example. So this is a matrix in sports code. So you've got... Um, the defending code kicks, goal kicks, build, create. So they're sort of the events that I said, they're the codes. And then obviously you've got the group labels on the on the, on, um, on the right side at the top, attacking principles, uh, movements off the ball. So the group label is the attacking principle. And then obviously them, their, um, them labels are the ones within the group of attacking principles. So then you've got diagonal ball, diagonal pass. So they're all part of... Um, of the attacking principles and they go under that group. Uh, so there's obviously an example of what I meant and how it looks like. Practical working example. Uh, so how we can use team identity and concepts to fit in opposition analysis. So this is just an example of, of, of work that we did in terms of trying to find clips of best practice to then introduce to the team and how they want to play. So here's an example of Man City. So this is a sort of through ball with an out in run. So it's a you're breaking the the line in the defense the defense the defensive line. So it's a run bang through the wall, in behind the defensive line, cut back inside and a goal. So this is an example of Man City. Um, then just a bit on the analysis process. So uh, we look at pre match analysis in the opposition. Uh, probably watch you know depending on the team maybe four to five games on average. Obviously, games that would be relative to how we play with teams maybe playing a similar shape, a similar way of playing. Um, so, obviously, it's re re relative to how we want to do it. So, you can get good examples if it works well or bad examples if it doesn't work well. And how that particular team react to them sort of shapes or them styles of play. Um, so, once you've done your pre-match analysis, you've had a meeting with the coaching staff, you've identified what the what the themes are, how the team, how the opposition team play, and things that you want to work on, then you can introduce it in training. Obviously, then that goes into the match day. Uh, also, introducing video meetings so the players can see the clips. Uh, once the match day happens, then that goes into the post-match, once it's finished, and then it's a sort of cycle again. Start with the pre-match, start with the next team, the next opposition that we have to play. Some advice on networking. It's really important to be proactive. It's really important to, to be on the front foot, to go and search for things, go, go, try and contact people. 
uh, you know, especially nowadays with social media. Um, it's a good platform to be able to publish your work online for a lot of people to see, so you can you can affect a, um, a big audience. Uh, so it's 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 a powerful platform. So try and use that if you can. Again, like be proactive. Contact different clubs. Contact different people. Maybe LinkedIn is another one. Uh, find out people's emails. Um, maybe go to the particular club. Try and speak to someone there. But just be proactive. Um, you know, the worst thing they're gonna say is no. But at least you know you've tried, rather than not trying at all. And you never know. One person might might give you that chance. And that's all you need. Again, sending your work, send your work to people or publish it online so people can see it, uh, try and get feedback for it. Um, volunteer uh, your services, so go and say, look, I work for free. And just be, be a proactive, like I said, um, show people that you really want to do it and you want to get involved and you're very interested. Touching upon key journals of reading, which is really important. So these are just a couple of... Um, a couple of books that um, I've read and I can recommend. Uh, so the Moneyball one is quite good in terms of Michael Mike uh, Michael Lewis. Obviously, I imagine a lot of you would have seen the film. If you haven't seen the film, make sure you watch it. Uh, really good film. Just in terms of how stats and how uh, data analysis can influence uh, a sporting environment. Uh, so it was to do with a, a team in baseball. Um, but that can be related to football. That can be transferred in terms of the process, in terms of the principles of it. Uh, and the importance of using statistical analysis to, to inform your decisions um, and to form a working process for the club. Obviously, it was based more around sort of uh, recruitment and scouting in this particular book and, and, and film, but you can then apply that to, to analysis, to team analysis, opposition analysis, etc., etc. Um, another book which is important is The Expected Goals Philosophy. I thought that was a really good book. Again, talking about statistics, um, in particular, expected goals um, stat uh, and the importance of it. Um, I think it's a really good book. I think it's uh, very practical how you can apply it to, to the to the football world or sporting world. Um, it's a really good point in that book, uh, and I think it's definitely the way forward. Uh, it's always growing now. The data analysis uh, and stats they're really growing um, within the industry of football in particular. So I think it's something that's um, that's something definitely to take interest in. For those you those uh, tactical um, tactical geeks, if you want to call it, that really enjoy football tactics, um, I'd recommend the Jonathan Wilson book, which is called Inverting the Pyramid. So yeah, essentially it's a history of, of football tactics uh, from the from the nineteen hundreds when football began all the way through to, to nowadays. Um, going chronologically throughout the years and how it's developed and how it's changed through different parts of the world. Very interesting book. Um, so one I'd recommend as well to get an understanding of, of tactics in football. And then the one and more sort of um, perceptual, perceptual cognitive skills and motor skills and how people learn and how people learn in sport and the uh, sort of decision making. So again, the perceptual cognitive skills and how they're developed and trained within sport. So interesting. So just to finish it off, really, my recommendations would be to, to work hard um, as a principle. Make sure you work hard when whatever you do. Um, just give 100% every single day. Try and learn, try and be a better person and a better professional. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's very simple, isn't it? It's, 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 but it's very effective. So if you work hard, I believe you always get, get results and try and work harder than your, your competitors and other people around you. Uh, but again, it comes back to finding your passion and then once you find your passion, you can dedicate yourself to that and you, you, you'd find yourself more motivated, more inspired to work hard because it's something that you enjoy. Network, like I said before, try and, try and meet people, try and, try and um, get your name out there, try and get contacts because at the end of the day, it does help when you know people and you get your name out there and people talk because it's a very small world. Um, so try and network network as much as you can to travel to different places try and meet different people um, contact different people and you never you never know some one of them uh, contacts may may end up being you know getting an opportunity of getting a job which is a good which is important watch and write so watch a lot of um, a lot of videos online in terms of uh, tactics in terms of interviews in terms of um, you know uh, press conferences, presentations on football and analysis. 
there's a lot of uh, content out there that you can watch and learn. Uh, make sure you write things down. You make notes. Uh, just find it easier when I write things down when I'm reading or, or I'm watching something or a lecture or, or a presentation. Uh, just sort of gets into my brain easier and into my brain easier and, and I digest and I digest it and understand it much better. So that's that's important. Uh, like I said, volunteer to different teams. Uh, volunteer yourself. Um, get yourself out there on social media. Contact different people. Write down your personal values and try and stick to them. To 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 sit sit down in a minute, uh, for you know for for um a couple of an hour or two and just really think the de deeply in terms of what you actually believe in, what are your humanistic values, what do you believe in, what you consider yourself as, what type of person, uh, uh, what's your philosophy on life and how do you think and, and write them down and be very truthful and honest to yourself, uh, whatever it may be. And then just try and stick to them principles uh, whenever you have to make hard decisions, whenever you're back, back against the wall, just stick to them, the values, and I'm sure it'll help you and get you along in life. Um, and then read, read, um, try and read as much as you can. It's so important to read, just train your brain. Uh, again, find the subject that you're interested because in, obviously that'll make it much easier. And once you find your subject, just, just keep reading and reading and reading and just learn so much. So I really recommend that, that you read. Uh, and you and you learn as much as you can. Just finishing off with a with a quote that I that I like uh, that I read the other day. Um, your passion is for you. Your purpose is for others. Like I said before, it comes back to the beginning of the presentation. Make sure you find what your passion is, which is for you, which is going to drive you, which is going to motivate you, and then your purpose in life is for others. It's always important to help other people, to inspire other people. I think you get a lot of. Um, um, satisfaction and, 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 and value uh, to that um, when you're helping other people I think it's what, what life's about um, we're here to help one another uh, and especially help the future yep so I hope you've enjoyed it if you have any questions uh, Chris can pass you my email it's no problem at all you can contact me um, uh, I'm more than happy to help out um, but I hope uh, this presentation, try to keep it as short and brief as possible without boring you. Um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you took at least something from it, uh, which you can use in your in your future. Um, whatever career path you may choose, um, just try and take them principles. Take them principles I've, I've spoke about with you. I'm sure, I'm sure they really benefit you and help you. But. Uh, yeah, obviously, um, like I said, in terms of the questions, if you do have any questions, you, you can contact me, um, Chris, Chris, your lecturer, can, can pass my information, no problem at all. Feel free, drop me an email and um, do my best to, to reply and respond. And um, again, yeah, thanks for your time, thank you for listening. Um, yeah, I wish you all the best.